Welcome, everyone. Today, we're very happy to have Kantaro Mori from the University of Tokyo, who will be telling us about uh, fusion surface models, simple one dimensional lattice models from higher categories. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction, and also thanks for giving. Uh, should I use mine? Fine. Mike? It's Mike. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk. Today, I'm going to talk about um, some two plus one dimension lattice models that general, uh, that admit some kind of generalized symmetry. And this work is based on ongoing, ongoing work, the yeah, upcoming, and with uh, the student Kanze Namura. And I should say that uh, most of the work is done by him. And he's very good. Okay. The topic of this talk is a general, generalized symmetry and model building. Okay, so the, this generalized symmetry is a new tool in the theoretical physics. And in this talk, I particularly talk about the higher and non invertible symmetry. And, but given this new tool, one question is that how can one systematically build a model with a generalized symmetry? So usually a symmetry is a very good, I mean, uh, guiding principle in model building. But uh, for what can we do that for? How, how can we do that for the this, uh, new generalized symmetry? And and today I'm I'm answering partially answering to this question uh, in the context of all these models. Upshot. Okay, so for, for conventional symmetry group, this group G, what we do is that for each side, we, we might we can prepare our, some representation of under this group, which we can call a general spin, and then just uh, prepare some interaction Hamiltonian uh, that preserves G, the group. Okay. So, so the today's construction is, is a general generalization of this, this simple construction into a more generalized uh, form of symmetry, which is called the fusion two category symmetry. So that's that's a, a version of finite generalized symmetry in two plus one dimensions, and and one prominent example is uh, is the one arises and the, the Topological orders in two plus one dimensions. Okay. So this is rough overlook of our model. So, so I, I'm going to propose a two plus one dimensional quantum model on a honeycomb lattice. The shape of lattice is not terribly important here, but just for our convenience, honeycomb is good. And and so, so we assign uh, to a honeycomb, we assign the variables on, on, on each bucket, edges, and vertices, like this gamma and A and phi. And, and for each assignment, we, we prepare a basis. Okay, so just like a usual spin system. But here, one, one difference is that there, there's a constraints on these variables, the various variables coming from, from, from the symmetry ontology. Okay, that, for that detail, I'm, I'm going to explain. And also, also we prepare Hamiltonian that uh, has a nice, nice role. Okay, so, so, so the model is going to have a fusion two category symmetry, which I'm going to elaborate on. And that is actually a given. Okay, so, so this is a fast general, generalization of spin systems you can think about on, on, on honeycomb lattice, but, but not in a random way, but in, in, in a symmetry, generalized symmetry based way. Yeah. Right. Emphasize. And, and, and by choosing this fusion two category as a special special category related to, to the anions, we can microscopically realize the symmetry of anions. And, and that 
by that we can uh, think uh, in, in that particular case, think this model as a candidate model for, for given topological orders. That's a rough summary. Any questions? Yes. Uh, so, so is this just sensitive to the fusion data or do you have to use all of the F symbols and so Yes. The, uh, the, in the definition of Hamiltonians, yes, uh, the order. Uh, so these constraints coming from just, just fusion data, but, but then the Hamiltonian, to write down the Hamiltonians that preserves this uh, symmetry, then, then we, we use all the data. What is the growth of the Hilbert space with regard to the size of the system? Uh, good, good question. Good question. Uh, so, well, there, there are actually two versions of the model. In the one version, it, it's still growth, like de depending on the input of some, some quantum dimension of, of the chosen object. I, I, I can elaborate later. Okay, as I proceed, so this, this is outline of the list of the talk. So first I, I review the, the recent development of general, generalized symmetry, and, and, and then I will talk a bit about the relationship to the topological order. Then I, I, I will review the one plus one dimensional version of our story, which of course, uh, we are uh, relying on and, and done by, for example, the authors. And then, then I will uh, go on to our own model. Okay, so general symmetry. Okay, so this is a basic thing. Uh, so for a con so that for the, gen the recent de development of generalized symmetry, uh, is based on the close relationship between the symmetry and, and topological operator, the extended operator. So for conventional symmetry and, and for group G and, and its element small g, uh, there is a, a corresponding codimension co one topological operator. And for the, for example, in the case where G is U1, we can build such operator uh, by just integrating the current over our dimension one surface and exponentiate it. Right? So the, the significant property of this operator is that it's topological. The correlation function does not depend on the detail of the shape of this dimension one surface sigma. And that simply come in this case come, comes from the conservation law or the, or the divergence-lessness of the current. It, and so this, this topological operator is convenient to, to in, in, because it can implement various, various operations you to do with the symmetry. So the most basic thing is the symmetry action on, on the given space, and that can be done by a space like space, space like uh, topological operator like this. And you can also define a twisted boundary condition by inserting this operator in a time-like way. Okay, and it, it can also, you, 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 and in circles are local operator like this, then, then you can shrink this uh, topological surface because it is topological and, and the shrink down to onto the local operator and that implements a uh, symmetry action on Onto, on the local operator. Yeah. And, and another uh, important operation is a fusion, which is just bringing two uh, topological operators and stuck it on to the each other. And so that's called fusion product. And for, for, for the Topological operators coming from conventional symmetry, this fusion, fusion product is just group like, meaning that you put, if you put the uh, UG1 and UG2, you, you get 
you get the new symmetry operator according to the group multiplication law. In particular, it, it, any topological operator coming in this way is invertible because in a, in a group, you for in any element, there is an inverse. And this one is uh, the <coughs> uh, denotes the tri trivia operator. Okay, so, so in summary, the, the a conventional symmetry operation uh, corresponding to an element in a group is, has its corresponding topological operator, which is codimension co 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 one and invert. And so the general, generalized symmetry is based on this observation. And you can you generalize this, the notion of symmetry by relaxing the first two conditions. <clears throat> okay. We'd like to keep the third condition because it, 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 it implies both the uh, conservation law and the RG flow importance. Now, <laughs> okay, so, so if you relax the first condition and consider the general codimension P plus one, topological operator, and that's called higher form symmetry. <laughs> I should have cited the pitch, which is first introduced by Guy Otto Kakus and Bilet in 2014. And, and if you relax the, the second condition, that's just simply called the non invertible symmetry. Okay. Uh, you can also try to, you can also, in some context, relax the third condition uh, in, in a good way. We still the subsystem symmetry in the fraction systems. But for that, I, I, I don't. About that, I don't. I will not talk today. Okay, so higher form symmetry. Oh yeah, I said here. Uh, higher form symmetry, as I said, is correspond to the higher codimensional invertible topological operator. And and uh, so as about opposed to the conventional symmetry, it acts on the local operator. Uh, sorry, not non-local operator, line, surface, and blah blah. Okay, so so this picture A is for the p equals to one. Then the interaction is by linking the topological operator with some potentially non-topological uh, line, <laughs> and you get you get you, you can potentially get some phase by shrinking this topological operator, and that's that's the charge. Q with the, the one form change. Okay, and the one example for high, high, high energy theories in particular is the, the electric one form symmetry. And that comes from, okay, so that can be found by noticing that this field strength is divergence because of the equation of motion. And then and also, this this field strength is of course an anti symmetric under the two indices. So that enables us to integrate field strengths or the one form symmetry current on the codimension two uh, of it, um, subway of, of the space time. And that defines an, uh, this higher codimensional topological operator. And in this case, the chart. So in this case, by by sorry. in this case, this uh, operator charge measures the electric charge coming from this line. So so this charge object is the result. Okay, and one in, one interest, interesting point uh, pointed out by these authors is that uh, of course of course this current creates the photons. So therefore, we can in, in this in, in this language of higher form symmetry, we can precisely uh, state that in what sense photon is a non uh, non particle of of, of this, uh, long form symmetry. Okay. Now a non invertible symmetry. So that's another kind of general symmetry. And that relaxes the fusion, though. So the, 
for a general topological operator that can occur, say, in a QFT or more generally that this model has a more, more general fusion rule than just group, group law. <coughs> and so in general, if you fuse the two topological operators, uh, you might get some over, over the uh, other topological operators. And this coefficient and ABC, which is a uh, positive integers, <laughs> is called the fu uh, fusion coefficient. And, the, and the in particular, in, for general fusion law, there uh, as our operator does not necessarily admit its inverse. There might not be other uh, the other operator if whose fusion law is just a single trivial operator. And, and one most most prominent example of non invertible symmetry is the is the one related to the Kramas one yourself duality in the one plus one dimensional critical icing model, which uh, was essentially known for in the 80s by Ferende and more re recently constructed on Lattice by also Mark Fendry. Uh, and the fusion rule looks like this the n squared is one plus the, the generator of z to So that explicitly invokes the, the sum and and not not a group like uh, fusion okay so what can of course combine the two realizations i told to consider the higher form non invertible symmetry and one easy place to you find it is a two plus one dimensional topological field theory. Okay, and 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 the topological field theory can be thought as uh, as the IR limit of topological order. Okay, so so uh, the two plus one the dimensional topological order is characterized by its quasi particle called anions, and in 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 its <coughs> IR limit this. The evolved line of anion becomes the topological line, and of course, the uh, topological line operator in the uh, in the TQ. Okay. So, so in, in that sense, we get the uh, topological lines in, in, in the IL. So first, that's emergent one symmetry, and also it it, it is spontaneously broken because it is a non-trivial non operator in the, the DYL. And in the fusion rule of anions or, or equivalent with the topological lines of the PKFT can be either group like, which in which case the called the anions are called Abelian and more general one, in which case we get a non Abelian anion. And for the latter case, we get uh, so in, in the in the deep area of TKFT, we get the non invertible one symmetry. Okay, so so in, in this sense. <coughs> So usually topological order is beyond, uh, not described described by a longer paradigm. But here uh, we can cheat in a sense and by generalizing symmetry and still uh, declare that uh, any one is uh, can be solved or could be solved uh, by by generalized longer paradigm. Okay, so one motivation. One of, one of the motivations of this work is uh, the, the fact that for the for, uh, most general type of topological order, the UV lattice construction is not really, there's not, not even a theoretical model for, for given higher topological order. And, and so, but here, as I reviewed, the topological order can be thought as a spontaneous symmetry broken phase of a general symmetry. So if you can um, construct a UV lattice model that explicitly has the same general, general symmetry, then at least theoretically, that, that might flow to the symmetry, uh, the spontaneous broken phase. That whether it really flows to the spontaneous broken phase is, is a dynamical question. And, and that 
uh, has to be answered in, in a hard way, but here uh, just it's it's just a, a theoretical corpus. It might be more interesting if it does not. Yeah. Sorry. Um, is, what would a phase or, or a theory with a generalized symmetry that's not spontaneously broken look like? Are there examples of those? I mean, well, for 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 some of the, the general symmetries, it, it might act on the trivial theory. So it, the, the most boring scenario is that it, it goes to trivial trivially gapped phase. But if but, it's already an emergent symmetry and it acts trivially on a theory, then it's not trivial. Really yeah, yeah, symmetry. yeah. In that sense, yes. So maybe yeah. a good answer is. Uh, the Kramer's one eight duality in the Ising model. Yes. That's mm. like the most elementary example. Yeah, it's a critical see. Ising model, gapless point that has a non invertible symmetry. I see. I see. Yes, I see. Yeah. Right. So that sort of protects the, the gaplessness. And it protects the, yeah, the gaplessness. Yeah, I also need to do some other example. Right. Okay. Uh, how good. Okay, then I, I for the review the work, I mean, introduced any on chain, which first in, introduced by this uh, very famous paper, my Microsoft Q people about called the golden chain. Um, so, so one plus one the any on chain is a one plus one dimensional lattice system. I mean, the space time one D lattice system with the confidence time. And that general generalizes is the spin chain, usual spin chain. And that and the model is naturally acted by a fusion one category symmetry. And so, so the input of the model is this fusion fusion category that I'm going to introduce and also an object inside the And, and you use this uh, object in the, in the category as a variable instead of, instead of the spin. So the fusion category is uh, mathematical, the mathematical concept behind this general, general symmetry. And, the, and mathematically, it is a generalization of finite group. Uh, so the fusion category consists, so knows about the Topological line, I'm talking about the one person dimensions. So, topological line operator that in, in mathematical term it's called a simple object. And the simple, simple, the set of simple objects in particularly includes the trivial line operator, which is called one. And in general, it's uh, it's convenient to think about some linear sum uh, with, with a, with a non-negative non integer coefficient of, of topological lines. So, so gen such general sum is called an object, general object of this category. And for given two objects, some sum of the top topological lines, um, there can be there can be a line changing of top topological line changing operator between the two objects. And and which forms a vector space. Right? So so that's called the one morphism, the morphism of this category in mathematical term. Okay, and yeah, in in, and in in this case, just fusion category case is this home the home space is one dimensional for if the two simple objects are the same and. Um, it's zero dimensional if the simple objects are, are different. Yeah. And it also comes with this fusion law that I've already explained uh, with some fusion coefficient. And when, when this fusion coefficient is non zero for, for given ABC, then you can, you can fuse the upper half of this picture. And then project down onto the one particular uh, simple object C. So, so that results in this junction. So, so basically, this uh, 
uh, fusion co coefficient counts the possible independent uh, junction operator, topological junction operator among three lines A, B, C. Okay, that's the junction. And then the last data uh, originated from the work by Mon Zyberg of, of this fusion category is F symbol. So the F symbol governs the associativity of, of this fusion product. So, so the fusion product should be associative, but not, not in a very trivial way. And rather, you, uh, you can, if you look at this F move, like going from this picture to that picture, just, just moving this point to over, over this point here, then you get, you get the non-trivial li uh, linear sum over this y appearing in this channel with some coefficient. And that coefficient is called, called the F symbol. So the fusion category it, it now contains the data about the topological lines and line changing operators between them and the fusion loop and the symbol that governs the associativity of fusion. Okay. And, and it, it is subject to a consistency condition called the Pemba one. Okay. Any question about this concept? Okay, so then, then any on chain. So first I, I prepare the state space, the cable space of the model. So the in, in input for the model is the fusion category, fusion category, and, and it's it's one object, raw. And and here for, for simplicity, I assume that the fusion coefficient is zero or one. And for that case. We consider the consistent coloring on edge in this fusion diagram. So for so for the all the vertical legs are the, are all. Then we put we try to put objects on each edge here and there, but constrained to uh, that for each edge, oh, sorry, each vertex, there is a non-trivial junction operator. That expands to this, this inequality. So, so this gamma i minus one and, and rho can fuse to gamma i. That's the consistent um, consistency of this coloring for, for this. Okay, so this is just and, and we prepare for each consistent coloring, we prepare a, a basis of the hills. So in that yes. diagram, the three-point vertices are there only when the fusion coefficient for coupling rho to gamma i to gamma i minus one is non-zero is one. Is yeah, one? yeah. In here, I assume this. So yeah, it's when it's one, then. So you fix one. You fix one rho. And then, yeah, I fix one rho. And yes. then you string the guys along the top according to when. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have a, the coefficient of one with that representation with that yes. yes yes so consider all the possible like a representation where you have a finite group and rho is a particular irrep that i'm choosing yes yes that's that, that's good yes and so so effectively we you we are considering some uh, as a whole of, of the of this lattice effectively we are considering the tensoring of many rows coming for each 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 button and that we, I'm expanding in terms of the events of that that sensor sensor product, huge sensor product. That's another way of saying it. Yes, yeah. So so this uh, dimension of the quantum uh, so dimension of the Hilbert space grows like L. Uh, sorry, the some the dimension of this object to L, and that's called that. Or a general fusion category that uh, you use the quantum dimension. And the, the Hamiltonian of the, of the, of the 
an impossible interaction Hamiltonian can be written in terms of F symbol like this. And pictoria, pictorically a, like this. Okay, so, so here F is some, some arbitrary simple object for some event of diffusion category. And for each simple object, we can write down this interaction, the next, next nearest neighbor interaction, pictorically like this. And then I also uh, define the symmetry action. So the symmetry action, <laughs> so, so, so the, the Hamiltonian interact, interaction Hamiltonian coming from, say, roughly speaking, stacking the new, uh, new object from below, while the symmetry is down by hitting from above. So, like this. And the, the actual computation of the action is done by like uh, consecutive F moves. So first I do F move here, then so to get this um, diagram, then I further do F move here and to move this point to the left, so the right, and, and then I can do also do the F move here and, and zip it this uh, orange line into, into the infinity. So that's a symmetry action, okay? And, and by pictorial uh, re representation, this uh, symmetry action manifestly commutes with the uh, interactor Hamiltonian because the one is coming from above and the other coming from, from the bottom, okay? And if you expand, uh, the, both action in terms of the F symbols, then this computation relation is nothing but the, uh, the consequence of pentamonic. Okay. So that's the, that was the anion chain. So here, the, here are the examples. So if we, if we take, well, this is me, the back, Z integrated vector space. This is just means we use because the, the Z2 symmetry. And for Z2 symmetry, and if you take rho to be like this non simple object, then this construction reduces down to just a spin, spin chain. Um, my interesting uh, choice is to take this to be the chromosome one again. Duality symmetry, there's a particular future category associated to that, and N squared equals to, to one plus u c two. And in that case, it, it actually, the, the construction uh, actually expands to the critical rising chain, at the, uh, exactly at the critical temperature. Okay. And in the original paper, the golden chain paper, thought about the case of the fusion category to be the Fibonacci category, which is a fusion category with fusion rule, like Fibonacci-like fusion rule, W squared equals W plus one, and rho to be this, take rho to be this uh, non-invertible line. The, this is the original golden chain. Okay, so, and this model also, so they, they found that this model new maker flows to the tricritical rising CFT. And, and, and it's known that this tricritical rising CFT also has a Fibonacci symmetry as a subset of Ferenc lines, if you know. And yeah, so this is one, yeah, this is another example of this RG flow from some uh, microscopic model to the uh, to the IR model, which is constrained by knowing what it's. What is the full non-invertible symmetry of the tricritical eigen? It's not just that. It's not just that. It 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 involves this uh, Z two. Uh, yeah, it also involves the uh, Ising critical Ising lines. So that part is emergent. That part is emergent in this. Part. Yes. 
Um, why is in the first example, uh, row is not just uz2? Oh, yeah. If you use the u, just single uz2, then the model becomes trivial. The, yeah, the, the dimension of the Hilbert space is like governed by the dimension of this row. And in this case, this uz2 have that is corresponding to the non trivial representation of z2, which has dimension one. And and then, so yeah, it's it's like, yeah, in other words, in, if you consider this, so the, if rho is just uz2, then there's no, there's no local degrees of freedom. If you, if you say this is one, then this row is uz2, then this gamma i is, is fixed to be the uz2 and vice versa. So, so it cannot be, it, it doesn't have any local degrees of freedom. So, but I thought row is like a simple object. So, so row doesn't have to be simple. Row can be some, so you need to, to get to, to get to this, uh, just use your spin chain, you have to choose row to be the, the non-simple. Then we get something. Yes. So from the construction, it seems like you don't have to pick the same row at each point. Oh yeah, yeah. So if you don't care about the translation invariance, then yes. Yeah, or you can do some row one, row two, row three, and and, and all that. That's also possible. You could have like some interface if you pick like different rows on either side of it. Yeah, then it flows to some interface. That's interesting. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so then our model. So our model is just generalization of what I've said. I mean, other. Uh, into the two plus one dimensions. And in two, two plus one dimensions, the, the general uh, symmetry is described by a fusion two category. That is, uh, this is mathematical concept introduced by mathematicians Douglas and Rudolf. So the fusion two category now, so in two plus one dimensions, we are talking about. So fusion two category now co contains the information about topological surfaces, lines, and point vectors. So now, now each object, the most uh, large, largest dimensional thing, is a sur our surfaces in, in this two plus one dimensional model. Okay. Then the one morphism between the objects or well, surfaces is, is nothing but the interfaces between the two surfaces. And in particular, when, when this, so we, we demand that, that there's a trivial surface. And if we, if we consider this home space between two trivial surfaces, that describes the bottom most problems. So if A and B, these A and B are trivial, then this is just a bug, bug topological. And then, then further, if you have this interface between capital A and capital B, then there's interface of interface, which is dimensionally possible. And that's called, so that's called two morphs. Okay, so, so, so this is, this is the structure called higher category. So usual category involves objects and morphisms, but uh, two category have one higher data, which is the two morphisms between one morphisms. And that, that's physically just corresponds to the interfaces of interfaces. Okay, and this is fusion category. So it, it carries the data about fusion. And, and here, here I use this box as a symbol. Okay. And there's also uh, this junction fusion. Or, yeah, so if this, this home space is now empty and there's a long morphism, that means there's a, 
one dimensional junction that connects the three surfaces. And then there is a generalization of F symbol, which is called tangent symbol. And that, yeah, so, so now, now the, the diagram should be written in the two plus one dimensions and, and uh, more room to do various operations. So we have to consider a more, more complicated thing, move, which is a tangent move. And, this, and basically this tangent symbol is the, the data governing the relationship between this, this diagram and that diagram. Uh, of, Yes. So now I'm confused about where everything is valued. Can you go back? Okay. So the fusion of surfaces, if you were to write it in a, as a fusion product, A tends to be at sum over C. The coefficients there, I would thought, were topological field theories. Yeah, so you, you can say that. Yeah, here uh, uh, I'm not using that language, but yes, uh, this F. Yes, you, you, you can saw this F, F is. Here, um, uh, how to say it? Yeah, so what is the relation of this little f to that to that point of view? Okay, so that point of view is like you you really more like this, yeah, and then you get c but stuck with with the decoupled mm -hmm. uh, t. To the TKFT. Okay. And this F, F is some particular boundary condition of that decoupled to, to the TKFT. So, so you, there's a decoupled t, to the TKFT here, and F, F is a. And it, ha the, it has to have boundary conditions? Yeah. yeah. Yes. But to the TKFT generally have boundary condition. And there, there's the F right. corresponds to the boundary. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then when you go to the next page, that is an equation among what kind of objects, therefore? Relation among, well, various data. This is like, this gamma ij are the surfaces. It is uh, the one morphisms and gamma, gamma ijk, is, this is uh, two morphisms. So, so then, so uh, relationship, if, relationship you write it as, if you write it as this equals, like, are those numbers on the right hand side or are they, or are they partition functions of theories? Like, what? Uh, so, so the external, if you only look at the external part, then the two things are the same. So, so if you draw, if you draw some diagram in, in, in your theory, two plus one dimensional theory, and some part looks like this. If you if you uh, if the some sub part of the, the complicated dia diagram looks like this, then you can replace this to to this. That's that's basically just the same as you. But what do you do with F? But 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 then you have to sum over over this question. The, the external data are the same. So you can sub, you can. Potentially substitute this diagram with that diagram. And, and this is a linear relationship. <laughs> what is that coefficient is a number? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, yeah. Once this gamma input data are all fixed, then this is this is a number. It's a number, it's not a partition function of the TPFT on some nanoscale. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I mean. That's a number which should, should be can be interpreted as a partial function of to the TKFT, I think. But then should depend on the manifold. I that so I I do not know the precise manifold, but that's fixed manifold coming from some some disk. Yeah, coming from this this side. Yeah, so so the the this is according to the way that Douglas said what would uh, define. And, and I couldn't, I, I haven't really expand this definition in terms of the physics stuff. So yeah, it, it is desire, more desirable to uh, say this data in terms of 2D TKFTs, which I haven't done.
Uh, another question related to the previous picture is uh, if we had tried to do this in higher dimensions, we wouldn't obviously have had boundary conditions, even for decoupled TGF. Oh, yeah, but. Yes, in that case, what happened? Uh, let me think later. Yeah, mm -hmm. should be able to answer. Okay. Oh, yes. So, so the fusion two category, as a recap, is, is contains a, the data about the surfaces and lines and, and interfaces of lines and, and fusion fusions among, among surfaces. And I haven't said, but there's also fusion among lines and, and this big tangent symbol. So this already fits the uh, F symbols for lines? Yes, so that, so for F symbols for lines can be shaped like these to be trivial and also like one of them they extend data to be trivial, some trivial things. So, so the, what one important class of this fusion two category is a fusion uh, invertible fusion two category when this uh, both fusion nodes about about surfaces and lines are group like. Uh, okay, then then this. In body fusion two categories are uh, equivalent to so called the two group. So the so two group con consists of the zero form and one form symmetry. So zero form symmetry part corresponds to the surfaces or, or the objects, and one form symmetry part corresponds to the lines or the, the morphisms. And then ten J symbol contains both uh, at the same time. Uh, contains both the so called post Postnikov class that uh, that governs the non trivial mixture between the zero form and the one form, but and also the two star. So it's, it's better to actually disentangle the, the two things, so uh, and that I but I haven't, I do not know how to do that in general. Okay. So, so that, that's an invertible case. And the example of no invertible case uh, is, is an anion, the topological order. Okay, so that you, usually the anions in the topological order is organized as a modular tensor category. That is a one category, but there is a way to cook up the fusion two category and Called the module category, two category of module categories of module tensor category, whatever it is. And, and that's whose objects are just described the gap self interfaces of the topological order. And, and the homomorphism between the, topo, the trivial self interface is nothing but the anions. And, and the, the tangent symbols know about the F, F, F symbols. Of the anions and, and also the R matrix. Yes. So, is there like a nice consistency equation that the 10 J symbol obeys together with? Oh, yes, uh, I should have said yes. So, in this particular case, that both at, at once uh, involves the pentagon and the hexagon identity for this uh, uh, modular tensor category data. Yes. Okay, then what's our model? So this is the anion chain fusion three, and uh, we just dimensionally generalize it. And now the input is the fusion two, two category. And just for be general, I, we, we put three, we, we pick three objects and and one morphism between between these three to form this diagram. Okay, so the, this this gray surface is lambda. This is rho, and this this thing is sigma, and this is f, and this is g. So some diagram. Here. 
which is natural generalization of the right, right diagram. Okay, then again, I we consider the possible coloring on the top. Okay, so now we can put objects on uh, each bracket and with the surfaces and, and the interfaces on each edge, which is one morphism, and, and each vertex, we might, might put the uh, two modes. Okay, so, so some coloring, and there's a constraint on coloring uh, according to the future. And this constraint depends on these choices I made on top of the choice of fusion data. So there are many choices. Anyway, uh, gives you some, give, gives us some hubris. Just to make sure I'm understanding the picture. So lambda, rho, sigma, et cetera, these are surface operators. So, so these three are surface operators and F and G are interfaces like, Okay. So F and G are lines, and there's also and the AIJs are also lines. Yeah, AIJs are also lines, and I didn't wrote, but phi is a vertex. Oh, yeah, it's pretty complicated. But a surface operator might have some like internal degrees of freedom, also. What oh yeah, so that, that, that just that, that's capital by A. to generate the Hilbert space. I'm I'm confused about sort of I'm confused about what the Hilbert space actually is. It's it, what's the dimension of the Hilbert space? So that so the actual dimension is 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 complicated function of this data, but asymptotic asymptot asymptotic dimension is governed by the, the analog of counter dimension of this object or F and G. You mean like the the S two bubble cost of it? Yeah, yeah, like. Well, they, they, there's a, well, oh, yes. Yeah. And so usually I think that a given surface operator might support some, I mean, just kind of intuitively, physically, a surface operator might support some internal kind of degrees of freedom, like a little TQFT that's coupled to the ambient bulk. Yeah. So th th those are reflected like, oh, like, like this possible. Viable. What was where's phi in this picture? So phi didn't I, I didn't know but phi that is project? project. So, so that's the the junction between the, this junction among junctions. So yes. previously you had this constraint of just putting rho everywhere because you wanted translation invariance. Why aren't you demanding that you place like the same lambda rho sigmas and f and g's everywhere? Well, yeah. Then I mean, if you if you want this G six symmetry, then yes. Because you you want to say that even if it's not a symmetry in the UV, the infrared would presumably still have like the full translation and rotation invariance in two D. Or well, that's not guaranteed, of course. Yeah, I, here I, I'm just just. Then be general, but not. I see. Yeah. Okay. That's your choice. So, yeah. But in each cell, you are fixing it. Like you can't just, yeah, okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm just be very general. And, and, and in, in practice, you can pick rho, sigma, lambda to be one uh, trivial. Yeah. yeah. And still, still, you can interesting. And then the Hamiltonian, to write down Hamiltonian, we also generalize this to that. And here, for so we stack for bracket. So this is bracket interaction, and and we stack the object from from the bottom. And here also there's a choices of like lines here, interface here, and and that's here. But yeah, anyway, for each such choice. There is a bracket action, and that, that acts on this here. Okay, and, and of course we can expand ex ex explicit formula in terms of the tangency. There's also symmetry action, and again, this symmetry action is from above. 
Now there is a two types of symmetry. One is zero form, the other is one form. And that pictorically commutes with this Hamiltonian for the same reason as before. But there's a catch here, uh, and there's a technical detail I haven't told you that this uh, fusion surface S, so this, this thing, action is actually not. Uh, is ambiguous on, on, on the Hilbert space I introduced. Another, another problem is that this topological line is supposed to be topological. I mean, the line action is supposed to be topological, but actually not in the Hilbert space I, I introduced. So, so, so to, to make, to remove the, these two problems, we have actually have to uh, project down to uh, pro project with this so called string net operator. Uh, this is a generalization of the slight generalization of what uh, Levin and Ben introduced. And, and then, then these two problems. So, so, so the here, the detail is that we have to, it's better to think, think the uh, the projected Hilbert space, which projected by this operator, string net operator, or, or uh, to put this string net operator in, into the Hamiltonian so that it's dynamically inverse. Okay. So the example, so, uh, so using invertible fusion two categories, we can obtain the models, is obtain the models with, with one form symmetries. So one form symmetries. Uh, or even anomalous ones. And also we can obtain the two group symmetries with non-trivial positive Nikov class, for example. And, and another uh, class of interesting examples is to input the symmetry of anions that okay. then, then I claim that this, this model, so whatever you choose the inputs, has the symmetry of anions, the same symmetry of anions, but microscopic. So, so if that symmetry is spontaneously broken in the IR, we expect that we get the uh, the desired topological operators in the IR. But it flows to the TPF. Okay, and for the special choice, like B is non chiral uh, we can also reproduce the original living web string net models uh, for the non-chiral topological data. Okay, so, so I finish. <clears throat> so higher and non invertible symmetries are described by fusion, fusion D category in the D plus one dimensions. And for D plus one and two, where the D plus one is contribution by mass and energy mode, and our contribution is D equals two, that and we can we can explicit we can have explicit about this model with, give, with any given fusion D. And in D plus D equals two case, this includes this fusion two category symmetry includes the non invertible one form symmetry that governs the anions. Okay, so so it, it would be very interesting to do the new maker study of this kind of model to see that whether actually this, this kind of these models realizes the logical orders. Okay, and this is some detail. So uh, thank you for your listening. Yes. So this construction gives you like a non-commuting model. Non-commuting model. Yes. Chiral spaces, for example. So hope free gen yeah, hope free uh flows to the chiral topological order. But you can't ensure that I can I cannot be sure because it's non non-commuting and yeah. It, yeah, it need need some numerical studios. I'm not doing it.
other questions? Are there natural interactions in the Hamiltonian that you can tune? Like, are there coupling constants? Yeah, there are many coupling constants. It's, um, so, that one, so, so there are many possible bracket Hamiltonians, and that's, it's not just choice of F, but there's a choice, there are choice of interfaces and interfaces. So, so, so there are many choices you can make here, and for each for each consistent choice, there's a I mean, consistent interaction. I mean, so, so there are many parameters you you can choose. Thank you, Kantaro, again. Yeah. Yes.